Hey guys, John here with NitroPlanes.com. Thanks for joining us for another installment of our FPV series. Today we'll be covering OSDs and simple wire connections to connect the two of them together. I do want to say thanks to Patrick for sponsoring this episode. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, checked them out yet, go to CSFPV or ChickenSashimiFPV.com and you guys can check out these cool FPV apparel. He's got shirts, hats, uh, bags, and a whole bunch of other different things uh, FPV related, whether you're into fixed wings or uh, multi-rotors, he's got them all. Today I'm wearing the uh, Battle of the Bands, the frequencies we talked about last week, 5.8, uh, 2.4, 1.3, 900 megahertz. A couple things to mention is when you're doing FPV, learning to solder is a very, very important part of FPV. Uh, not only is it important for you guys to learn how to solder and do this stuff, it's also very cost effective. If you don't know how to solder, you're going to have a hard time and uh, you're going to be very limited on products that you can purchase that are uh, ready to go or plug and play, for example. You're going to have to go with a lot of proprietary stuff. But if you learn to solder, you can kind of mix and match different things to your liking. So I've got here a couple different setups here and I'm just going to kind of go through and show you how to get different things set up. So I've got here the Immersion 600 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter. As you can see, there's a bunch of different labels and connections listed here on the video transmitter. There's a whole bunch of different wires here uh, that could make things a little bit confusing for you. Here's the Boscam video, cam video transmitter, which also allows the same type of connections. However, the polarity may be different, so make sure you research your video transmitter prior to plugging any power or plugging any connections to it. So I'll go with this one since it's the easiest one to use. There's only three vital plugs and connections that we're going to have to make on this transmitter. The first one is the ground wire. As you can see, it says ground here. Now, most video transmitters are 12 volts. However, there are some out there that are uh, 5 volts, so make sure you find, and 3 volts. So make sure you check the specs on your video transmitter prior to applying any kind of power to it. So I know for sure that this one can run in a wide range of 2S to 4S LiPo, which is anywhere between 7 volts up to uh, 15 volts. So uh, in my case, I'm going to power this off of a 3S LiPo. Some of the Fat Shark transmitters come with these really cool uh, power filters and also balance plugs. So what you can essentially do is power this directly off of the balance lead from your battery. One thing to mention, never power a video transmitter on without the antenna. These antennas offer some dissipation of the power and also the heat. If you power this on without an antenna, it could burn up the transmitter. Now I'm not saying that if you accidentally power it on and you forgot to put the antenna, the thing's going to instantly fry. However, you want to make sure you power these on with the antennas on. A couple other types of connectors you can use is instead of using the balance, the power lead, you can use a simple JST connection to power your video transmitter. And lastly, if you want to use the same flight pack, you can actually use a JST plug with the balance lead on the back. Now this JST plug will fit in there. Just make sure that the polarity is correct. As you can see, I have ground and battery for the ground and the battery. If you plan to use the same battery throughout your entire system to power your camera and your video transmitter, you don't need to worry about the rest of these wires. The only one you'll have to worry about is this yellow wire here. This yellow wire here is the video cable. This is the video signal coming from your camera into the transmitter. If you decide to power your camera separately from your video transmitter, you're going to have to run the ground wire to your camera as well. So in powering the immersion 600 milliwatt transmitter, I don't like to use any of the supplied connectors. I like to use my own connectors. This is basically just a male to male jumper and it's very simple to hack this up in order to use in this system. All you need to do is take a sharp blade, pull out the video cable, clip half of the servo lead, line up your polarity, and now you've got a power established. The next wire here is the yellow wire or the orange wire, uh, depending on which servo wires you use. And you can simply just pop this on to the video lead. Now I've got a good connection uh, ready to receive a video signal. As you can see, I have a few different cameras here. For example, this camera also has the same connectors on there. And I'll show you which wires to, to wire up. 
So all I need to do is now apply power to the red and blacks on this system. All I would have to do is get a female to female, or if you have soldering skills, you can actually solder a female connector on there. As long as we match up the colors, Now we've got a FPV system set up and ready to transmit. So as you can see here, when I apply power here, if you follow the loop, you're going to get black going all the way through to the black, splits here to the ground of this camera, the ground of this transmitter. Same thing with the red. The red comes back and connects to the power of my lead. The white, as you can see in this setup, is not used, but however, when these two wires connect here, I've basically jumped the loop and gone straight into the video transmitter. Now, another thing to note is when you're using a camera, make sure the power of your camera is also compatible with the power of your video transmitter. In my case, these are both 12 volts, so running off of a 3S LiPo should be no problem. All right, so I've got my video screen here with my 5.8 gigahertz receiver with the matching channels of my immersion transmitter. Now all I have to do is make the connection. As you can see, the power light came on on my video transmitter, and now I've got a live video feed. My image is a little bit off, and that's just a focus of my camera. But as you can see, I've got my video system set up. Now all you need to do is place this on your aircraft in the correct configuration, um, meaning the video transmitter should have nice optimal air airflow as we talked about earlier. Your antenna should be pointed straight up and down and your camera should be somewhere sitting on the nose of your aircraft or somewhere in a forward uh, position. Now if we want to Im imply and add a OSD, with our system set up with the standard servo plugs, makes things very, very simple. For example, this Cyclops OSD here has three pin connectors, as you can see. If I flip it over, if you just simply look on the bottom, you can see AVN, which is our camera. It says signal plus minus. I know, for example, this Cyclops Storm puts out 12 volts from this port. So all we need to do is simply make the connection of our video camera on the input. So I've matched it up. I've lined up my polarity plus minus and signal. I'll do the same thing with my video transmitter. And that's going to go simply in the audio video out port. So I've got everything all wired up here. As you can see, I've got my video camera receiving the live video feed plugged into the audio input of my on-screen display where it will process the video image, throw the overlaying data onto the actual OSD, then send it out the video out port through my video transmitter. So this is a 3S LiPo. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Voila. As you can see, it says starting up the storm breeze and I've got vital data. There's different display modes of this on-screen display. I don't have the switch set up currently to toggle between the two of them, but as you can see, there's other settings you can set up. I know this on-screen display requires you to hold down the button as startup and you get a little menu. You can change the units to English. You can add the RSSI, which is the range signal strength. We'll talk about that later in a different series different video and video output. You always want to make sure all your equipment here in the United States is set up to NTSC and in Europe you want to set it up to PAL. Now some equipment will work with PAL and NTSC and or they'll have an auto setting but chances are you need to set it up to the NTSC setting. So I'll go ahead and exit as you can see my red light here is blinking trying to acquire a GPS and all the vital data is displayed on the screen here. And there's the different configuration for the screen. As you can see, uh, I have zero GPSs yet, so it's not giving me any data. I don't know if I'll have that here in the warehouse. Uh, you've got a compass here, which will tell you your heading. You've got an altimeter here, which will tell you your altitude and also your speed. These are all based and dependent on the GPS. As you can see here, there's a number fluctuating up or down, minus plus. This is a barometer or an altimeter variometer. This will basically tell you your uh, asc ascension altitude or your ascension speed and your descension speed. These are a great feature for when you have a quad and you want to know if you're moving up or down. And also if you are in a dive, you want to make sure you're not going into too steep of a dive. Or if you're uh, gaining altitude, you want to make sure you don't stall out your aircraft. As you can see here, I've got it all set up. And when I plug in my 
lipo here, you'll notice that a different set of information pops onto the screen. And that's my current sensor. This tells me my current battery voltage, my current amp consumption, and how many milliamps I've used. And as you increase your throttle or decrease your throttle, these numbers will all change. All right, guys, that's a quick look at your uh, setting up of your OSDs and your cameras. If you guys have questions, more questions about this particular information, don't forget to put that in the comments below. So let me just go ahead and give you guys a quick tips on setting up your on-screen display and your FP. All right, guys, as stated earlier, soldering is a very important part of FPV. Most of your FPV equipment can be run off of just your standard servo plug with the three pins, your yellow for your signal, or it could be uh, white or sometimes uh, orange in some cases uh, for your signal, your red, your red is almost always your power, your black is always almost always your ground, and it'll either be brown or black or a darker shade other than the red and yellow. Quick note, as you can see here, I've got my camera here and it has the same power setup. But as you can see, I have the wires mixed around. So you have to make sure that whatever is powering this equipment, the polarity is correct. Just because I, I said I'm gonna go off of the servo plugs does not mean that the configuration is, is the exact same. For example, on this 5.8 gigahertz transmitter, if I was to plug this in matching the yellow, I have the ground and the positive backwards, so I would short out my equipment. So in this case, I have it backwards. Another thing to note too is just because the plugs are the same does not mean that the voltages are the same. These two cameras here run off of five volts. So it's very important that you run these off of five volts. The great thing about the immersion transmitter, they do power five volts. So in this case, I've got the red powering my five volts, the black with my ground, and the white as my signal. Voila, there I have a good connection. I've double checked and made sure that my input power is correct. My Video out is in the correct configuration. My ground is going to the ground and the red is going to the red. Going back here to the hacked up security camera. Now you've got these big bulky plugs, can't do much with these. So what you're gonna need to do is utilize the same plugs that they have and basically just line up the wires. In my case, I really don't need the OSD right now because I'm not gonna be changing in these settings. And for this particular camera, you don't need the OSD board to operate the camera. You can simply do your settings and then put this aside for later adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this wire off of here and simply solder it onto there to make my connections. And we're basically just gonna solder these straight to each other. This particular solder has flux already in it, so I'm not gonna utilize the flux. Just match up the colors, black to black, red to red, and yellow to yellow. Now I rushed right through that and my solders aren't the greatest. However, in your particular setup, take your time, make sure you guys do a correct and proper solder because you will ultimately have to depend on this to get your aircraft back. So if you uh, rushed it and you did a crappy job, and your whole aircraft is lost because of a bad solder, that would kind of suck. So once I've got these connections all made and soldered up, you can simply plug this right back into your system. And now I've got this camera all wired and set up to use. And not only do I have it ready set up to use on this one, you can also interchange them and plug them into different systems later on once you get a good rhythm set up with the servo connectors. All right, guys, thanks for watching another episode. Uh, if this video helped you out, don't forget to hit the like button. And I uh, hope I simplified things for you, gave you a couple of trips and tricks to get your FPV system set up to make the connections between your camera and your FPV gear. Uh, again, if you guys want a chance to win a shirt, click here, which will take you over to my channel. There'll be instructions on how to win that shirt there. And as always, I'm Johnny with nitroplanes.com. Thanks for watching.